Hi everyone, thank you for the opportunity to present. I am Cynthia Araradian and I will be discussing a systematic literature review of intestinal perforations in vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I have no disclosures. Vascular Ehlers-Danlos, known as VEDS, is a subtype of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a group of connective tissue disorders. VEDS is due to pathogenic variants in the COL3A1 gene and is inherited in an autosomal dominant manner equally among sexes. The pathogenic variants result in the production of defective type 3 procollagen or reduction of normal type 3 procollagen production. Consequently, patients are at risk for impairment to tissues rich in type 3 collagen, such as the aorta, intestines, lungs, and a gravid uterus. We know these patients have difficulties with vision, gastrointestinal problems like viscous perforation, joint hypermobility, vascular complications, thin skin, and easy bruising. Given VEDS is a rare disease affecting only 1 in 50,000 individuals and is only 5% of the Ehlers-Danlos population, there has not been significant research within this field. The focus of today's systematic review is to discuss the spontaneous gastrointestinal perforations within this population. Oftentimes, the perforations occur as the first complication in this patient population. Even though these perforations can be difficult to manage, it is not often the cause of death in this population. They can often be attributed to vascular complications. Despite this, being a common manifestation of the disease in this population, management of intestinal perforations in VEDS poses a significant surgical challenge. There is currently no consensus on optimal surgical management in the emergent and subsequent elective settings. To address this gap in knowledge, we aim to quantify the risk of VEDS-associated intestinal perforation and as a secondary objective to synthesize existing knowledge of the surgical management of this complication. A systematic literature search was performed using PubMed, Sinal, Cochrane, Medline, and Embase in August of 2023, identifying VEDS-related intestinal perforation publications. The Covidence online platform was used to help streamline the screening process. The initial search produced 615 articles, with 530 articles screened after the removal of duplicates. Two independent reviewers and a third independent reviewer for conflict resolution performed data extraction. All data were reported according to the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis known as PRISMA. Statistical analysis was performed using a harding nap adjustment given the smaller sample size in an attempt to decrease bias. The heterogeneity index was also utilized. The grade criteria, a framework that allows for reading the quality of evidence and assessing for bias was used. The inclusion criteria for the study included retrospective and prospective studies including VEDS patients with specifically gastrointestinal complications. The exclusion criteria were other systematic reviews, expert opinions, consensus guidelines, case reports and case series, and text that only had an abstract without a full review. Five non-randomized studies were selected for the meta-analysis and included a total of 854 patients with VEDS. The studies were published between 2000 and 2021 and included patients with genetically confirmed VEDS at multiple institutions worldwide. The rates of spontaneous colonic perforation were reported in all papers, as this was the most commonly reported GI complication in each paper. The statistical analysis was performed using R to pool the data from each of the papers. The weight was assigned to each study given the number of ev events reported within their sample size. The pooled colonic perforation rate was 17%. There was a total of 141 reported instances of colonic perforations. Only two of the papers discussed the rates of small bowel perforation, and the events were few compared to colonic perforations. The pooled small intestine perforation rate was 3%, with a total of 14 patients reported. 
Given the limited information, there is also a wide confidence interval. The heterogeneity index of I squared is 78% in this analysis, so the heterogeneity is quite high and statistically significant. So there is limited ability to estimate the real proportion based on just these two papers reporting outcomes. Next, we assess the rates of reperforation for these patients. The reperforations were mainly in patients who had a subsequent colonic perforation, as is tended to be the most common area of perforation in the GI tract. A reperforation is defined as a new perforation in a different segment of bowel. It is distinct from complications with the anastomosis, such as a leak. Three of the papers included their data on reperforations. The pooled reperforation rate is 37% with a wide confidence interval and a statistically significant heterogeneity index. It is interesting to note that the events of a colonic or small bowel perforation often preceded the diagnosis of VEDS, which was noted in three of the papers and estimated to be near 75%. Given this information, most people are diagnosed with VEDS after an inciting event. The Adam et al. paper notes that 87% of their patients had their first GI event within a median 31 months before diagnosis. I wanted to focus on two of the papers that provided the most information about their patient population and surgical recommendations. The first one I will be discussing is the Adam et al. paper, which was a 16-year longitudinal follow-up of patients at a French tertiary referral center. The Adam et al. paper found that the most commonly reported location for a colonic perforation was a sigmoid colon, which was seen in 72% of their cases. The most commonly reported procedure was a Hartman procedure known as a segmental colectomy and creation of an end colostomy. Given the risk of complications like anastomotic leaks or reperforation, the authors recommended considering a subtotal colectomy with iliorectal anastomosis electively in these patients. They reported patient that patients in their population who had this procedure and tolerated it fairly well. The second paper is the Pepin et al. that was a retrospective review completed at the University of Washington and an institution in Zurich, Switzerland, which included 220 index patients and 199 of their affected family members. They again reported the most common location for a colonic perforation was a sigmoid colon, and the majority of their patients underwent a colectomy with a colostomy creation. They recommended creation of a colostomy over a primary anastomosis due to a higher initial failure rate and complications down the line. They reported 84% of patients with a colostomy subsequently underwent a colostomy takedown with an anastomosis within one month to one year after their initial perforation. 32% of these patients had a subsequent perforation after they had a reanastomosis. The grade criteria is a framework that helps estimate the certainty of evidence. Given the relatively small sample size and heterogeneity seen in our statistical analysis, the outcomes of colonic perforation and reperforation were given a grade of low certainty, meaning our confidence in the effect estimate is limited and the true effect may be substantially different from the estimate of the effects. Given the minimal information we have about small bowel perforations, this was a grade of very low certainty meaning we have very little confidence in our effect estimate. This study is limited by the availability of data regarding VEDS. Many of the reported instances of VEDS are case reports of patients. The rarity of the disease makes it challenging to create randomized controlled trials to assess surgical outcomes or to study large numbers of this patient population. Given the small sample size, our statistical significance our statistical analysis had a larger heterogeneity index, so the values reported may not be similar to the true effect seen in the actual population. Given the retrospective nature of all the reviews in the study, there's also a component of selection bias. 
In conclusion, VEDS is a rare disease with serious complications, which makes recognition and treatment of intestinal perforations in these patients a challenge. The patients are at risk for colonic perforation than subsequent perforations, so they must be monitored closely. The challenge in this population is the post-complication diagnosis, so most patients do not know they have this condition until after they present with a GI or arterial complication. A high index of suspicion should be had for VEDS in younger patients presenting with a spontaneous intestinal perforation. Thank you all for your time. I am happy to take any comments, questions, or suggestions.